Welcome to today's teaching. I've got new word for you today. We're in a time of economic collapse. Uh, the financial systems have uh, failed us and so uh, people are under financial pressure, economic pressure. We're in a time of uh, global collapse. The uh, terrain is shifting under our feet. Uh, earthquake in Haiti, uh, buildings collapsing, uh, people in peril. Uh, we're in a time of relational collapse, uh, relationships falling apart, uh, uh, marriages uh, failing at an unprecedented rate. Uh, we're in a period of physical collapse even as people are living longer we're seeing new diseases uh, pop up uh, diseases that uh, cause people to scratch their head that uh, there apparently is no cure for uh, there's collapse all around us uh, which is what the uh, the the sages of old and scripture teaches us that uh, the whole creation is groaning and travailing together uh, right now waiting for the adoption, waiting for uh, God to uh, manifest and demonstrate the new heaven and the new earth. And so we're going through uh, the throes of uh, degeneration, of uh, corruption. Uh, and so whatever is here on this planet, even though it was designed uh, to always uh, grow and expand, because of the curse, uh, because of the fall of humankind, uh, everything deteriorates. Uh, the scientists uh, call it the law of entropy, that uh, everything tends toward disorganization. Everything, uh, uh, Chinue Achibe uh, wrote a book about it and called, and called it, uh, Things Fall Apart. And when you're in that kind of environment, um, the easiest thing to feel is fear. Uh, there, there's a lot of fear around us right now. We're, we're living in a time of unprecedented fear. And uh, I believe that it is the biggest enemy of the project. Because um, the Bible tells us that perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment and he that fears has not been made perfect in love well uh, what is the condition of the preject the parental reject uh, the preject feels that uh, his or her mother or father does not love them they feel rejected uh, a preject by definition is someone who doesn't feel embraced uh, accepted and loved by one or both parents um, and and now let, let let me issue this caveat uh, whenever we're talking about projection we're talking about it from the perspective of the child because uh, by and large parents do not have children to reject them uh, rejection is not about the intent of the parent it's about the experience of the child and so the parent can be doing everything they know how to do to love that child and that child still end up feeling rejection and if the child feels rejection uh, uh, it is it is uh, it is pointless to uh, make the claim that the child just needs to get over it that it is not a valid feeling uh, we've got to allow these children to own uh, their feelings of rejection, to even validate those feelings so that they can get over them. You cannot get over something, you cannot uh, grow through something if you're consistently told that it's not real. <laughs> so um, uh, projection is a real thing and we take it seriously. Uh, that even though the parent does not intend to reject the child, the child can still feel rejection because we're all flawed human beings and none of us parent perfectly. And so no matter how great a job your parent does, your parent is likely to fall short of the stated goal in scripture uh, to love um, 
uh, unconditionally by giving your life, laying down your life. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one for, for another. What kind of love? Uh, God demonstrates uh, his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What did he do? He gave. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Hereby perceive we the love of God that he laid down his life for us and we ought also to lay down our lives for one another. The way we demonstrate love is by laying down our lives, which means that I've got to put somebody else ahead of myself. Well, most parents, they intend to do that, but there are moments, there are times, there are even seasons, there are stretches in a, par in a parent-child relationship where the parent is actually putting him or herself first. Why? Because uh, parents are going to respond to the needs that they're aware of and very often parents aren't aware of the inner needs of their child they're aware of the external needs the need for food clothing shelter the need for a safe place uh, but uh, unaware very often of the emotional needs the spiritual needs that are uh, necessary that that must be met uh, and, and if your child has spiritual hunger and you're not feeding that spiritual hunger, why that child is going to feel rejection. So uh, every parent is going to fail in some way. And that's going to produce a feeling of rejection. And that uh, is responsible for the levels of projection that we point out in our, uh, on our website and uh, in our uh, project assessment because you can be cracked you can be broken or you can be shattered. Um, and so, uh, projects are going to feel uh, rejection because they don't uh, feel uh, totally, completely loved. But watch this, watch this. When a child doesn't feel loved, and uh, I'm not talking just to um, uh, uh, children right now, I'm talking to uh, adults who have experienced this in their childhood and have never healed from it, have never gotten over it. And you know that uh, people tell you all the time, you know, oh, get over it if you if you've been wronged, if you've been if you've been hurt by your parents, if you've been hurt uh, by anybody. You know, you need to just get over it. Well, that's true. You do need to get over it. But what never happens is the people who tell you to get over it never tell you how. How do I get over it? That's what this ministry is about because we're bringing to you the steps to actually get over parental rejection. This is about how to overcome parental rejection, how to get over it so that it doesn't debilitate you spiritually, emotionally, or physically. Um, so uh, when you feel rejection, it is uh, because you have not gotten your uh, needs met or ministered to, there has not been a uh, complete total selfless love that has uh, uh, taken care of all of those needs. And what does the Bible tell us about the absence of love? It opens the door for the presence of fear. Uh, that, that, that's the relationship there. Uh, uh, Perfect love casts out fear, for fear has torment. And he that fears has not been made perfect or complete in love. In other words, um, love has not uh, uh, worked and manifested in, uh, in such a way and to the degree that it has expelled fear. When, when love shows up, fear goes. When fear is present, love isn't there. And I believe that right now in this age, in this uh, dispensation, in this time that we're in, that there are many people who are feeling fear and particularly prejects. And uh, we're going to talk tomorrow about what that fear produces. Uh, you can see that uh, we'll talk about how you can tell whether you're actually living motivated by fear and then we're also going to talk about how you can get over that. Father, thank you for this revelation. Help us to begin to walk it out in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, do three things for me. Send this to somebody you know who needs it. Log on to our uh, YouTube page and then go to the top and subscribe to our videos. Go to the bottom and leave a channel comment so others can be blessed by how God is ministering to you through these messages. 
All right, that's it. This is Earl Middleton reminding you to live forcefully, demonstrate the kingdom from a whole soul, and I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.